Hey, what's up, Zach here, and today I've got Dante DiVincenzo's signature shoe, the Anta Zap 1. Let's get into them. And thanks to Famuji Sneaker for getting me a pair of these to check out. If you want to check them out, leave a link in the description below. Now, I know the title of this video says, you know, what these shoes say about Dante DiVincenzo's game. However, I don't think one shoe could really encapsulate all of his game, especially when he physically tackles members of the Philadelphia 76ers, but I uh, will give it a try. Now, starting off in the uppers, the one thing I did notice was is that these do have a pretty interesting combination of really rugged support, but also a lot of breathability. If you look in the distal forefoot under the microscope, it is more of the, the chunky TPU strands as well as the smaller bundles, like those horsehair bundles uh, of TPU going through there. And you can actually see that just with the naked eye, but under the microscope really does give you a sense of really how strong the uppers of these are. Now that goes all the way through the shoe and that does connect with some foxing here, some TPU foxing on the lateral side. And then you got some foam that comes up here over the medial side. Now the lace line of these things is an outrigger lace line, kind of quasi outrigger, quasi integrated, but those strands go all the way down into the strobe board and then covering that is a netted gusset on that tongue. Now that tongue's got all these macro channels for breathing. I don't know why every company, you know, and every model doesn't do this. It's so easy to make thicker padded tongues that still breathe exceptionally well. If you look at these things on the breathability test, it did heat up 115.6 degrees. What I thought was interesting though is, is where the fog was coming out. If you look at these on the breathability mapping, really the fog was coming out, of course, the tongue, and then more into the central forefoot. Not a lot on the lateral sides and medial sides of the forefoot, which I thought was interesting because it is all pretty much the same mesh lattice there. So honestly, for how rugged the uppers are, how substantial and well-built the uppers are, um, the, the breathability really isn't bad whatsoever. Now the upper durability test, 10 seconds, highest grit sandpaper. It's interesting, the burr just basically melts the TPU. It does not get through it though. Almost makes it look more substantial once it's all melted together. One thing is you do have exposed foam here between the rubber as well as the uppers. So it is gonna start to look a little weird. However, what's underneath of that, like I said, it's pretty substantial. So even though it might look a little bit scuffed up, I still think these are they're okay for draggers or sliders. You know, we'll talk about what they can do on outdoor courts also when we get to the um, outsole section. But the one thing I did notice about these was is that the heel slippage on these honestly was a little bit persistent. Um, it wasn't bad. It was about mild to moderate, but there wasn't a lot of improvement with break-in. So um, there is a pretty big internal heel counter in here, and then it is wrapped with EVA around there. And then you do have a, a decent you know, padding here in the ankle collar. Um, I will say though that there's not a ton of padding once it gets from the heel counter kind of into the true ankle collar, then into the, the last eyelet stay. So no, the heel slippage isn't terrible, but like I said, there's, you know, a lot of our shoes we see, there's a drastic improvement after an hour or two in them. And these ones, it's pretty mild to moderate throughout the duration. But getting into the midsole teardown, this, this was definitely a fun one to look at. Now, number one, you've got nearly a full length bed of nitrogen infused thermoplastic foam, which is very bouncy feeling, very responsive. And on top of that, you have a double thick top loaded shank that does cross from the rear foot into the midfoot. It is a very long top loaded shank. It was nice to see. But you also have carrier foam here, as you can see, wrapping around the heel counter and then right here in the midfoot of the shoe. On the microscope, it, it does look like EVA. It doesn't really look super plasticky in there. And then I, I did find somewhere where it did show that there was an EVA component to this. Interesting thing is, is there's this little like TPU piece here, this orange piece here that wraps through the shoe and then around to the lateral flange. So the lateral flanges have a really strong rubber clip here, but then it also is reinforced through the midsole so that it is gonna be pretty strong underneath of your foot. Is that all of a sudden gonna make you never sprain your ankle? No, but it is nice to see that Anto was taking a little bit of consideration into, hey, how do we stabilize that lateral flange a little bit more without bulking it up? Well, wrapping it around the midsole underneath of there so that when you compress it, it stabilize a little more. I thought that was pretty cool. Now, if you look at the bounce height test, 42 centimeters in the heel and then shocker 42 in the forefoot. I mean, there's a real chunky piece of foam there in the forefoot, like in the rear foot. And then also remember thermoplastic foam that has these vacuoles here, whether that's nitrogen infused, CO2 infused, whatever, those really insulate. The performance is really consistent across the stack of foam, right across the drop of foam, I should say. So really from rear foot to forefoot, the shoe feels pretty much as bouncy in the rear foot as it does in the forefoot, but also uh, very forgiving. Remember, anytime you see those, those compartmentalized foams, you know, like boost foam like this, you can really expect a pretty consistent performance across that foam structure. 
And getting into the outsole tread, this is really where I, I saw the diversity of tread really well done. Some shoes try to do the linear, the razor, the herringbone, and the flat, and then sometimes it just kind of falls flat, no pun intended. But in this one, you've got more linear bands of tread going through the mid part of the shoe, and those are spaced out pretty well, and there's a lot of depth to them. So, you know, they're gonna grab, remember there's these little lines, but they're, they're in these segments of three. And so those segments of three that are spaced out, they really do well grabbing on an outdoor court. Whereas the fine strands that make up those bundles of tread that they do well on indoor courts. And then you've got more of this razor herringbone pattern on the medial and lateral side. And you've got some flat tread here on the flange, which is pretty cool because it also beefs up that lateral flange, right? It's just one solid piece of rubber. And then really in the rear foot just kind of goes in this lattice pattern. And then you got some of that, the razored herringbone. Honestly, this thing's pretty consistent. Um, I was pretty surprised. I had these on indoor courts, then outdoor, then indoor again. And the first time I had them out, I'm like, ah, oh, the rubber's new, you know, that, that, that's great, that they're doing okay. And then I got them dirty, and then I put them back on, you know, slicker hardwood, and really no problems whatsoever. The dust pickup really wasn't a, a problem at all. Dirt pickup wasn't a problem at all. Things are incredibly sure-footed, more sure-footed than I thought they would be. You can look at it on, on the viewing box. Kind of, you can see how, you know, there's not a ton of rubber movement because the durometer on these is pretty high, but there, there's enough. Like I said, there's enough diversity of tread there where you're always grabbing traction really, no matter where you're putting your foot down. You look at it on, on the grip test ramp, they slip at 35 degrees. And I think that's pretty representative of them. Like I said, they're not super tack shoes, but like I said, the diversity of the rubber and being able to lay down traction in different parts of the shoe and, and how it's so consistent amongst the surfaces, I think is really what uh, does really well for these. Like I said, they are incredibly sure footed shoes and having these like punched out treads here on the flange really does allow when you're pressing into the lateral flange on there, it really allows that to grab very well. This is really a nice way to do more of a flat rubber pattern. Now, if you look at these things on the speed ratio, they come in at a 2.79, a shank score of 0 0.4, very well earned, bumps that up to a 3.19. I think that's exactly where they should be. And I think really that's where you can start to see kind of where, you know, Dante DiVincenzo is going to like a pair of shoes like this. Number one, because he's gonna be running from people because he's starting so many fights. But number two, he does best when he is getting shots off pretty quick, right? I know when, when I brought these shoes out and my dad was looking at them, he goes, oh, those, those, are, those are DiVincenzo shoes. He goes, oh man, he's like so good at getting that quick three off. He's so good at just getting that quick pass, that and that. He's just really fast feet. And I started watching again. I'm like, yeah, he's right. And I really think these complement that very well with how quick they are how sure-footed they are, but also they play more like a much lighter shoe than they are. Not that they're super heavy, but they play like a much lighter shoe, but they're sure-footed like a, a more bulky shoe. So no matter if you're trying to haul from one end of the court to the other, from coast to coast, or if you're just trying to get a very quick shot off, then yeah, this shoe definitely has really all that in spades. It's really that midsole and outsole working together. That, that does that very well. But getting into the fit of the Zap Ones, um, number one, they have a pretty strong inflare at 14 degrees. I mean, these things are, are swooped in there. Um, number two, they come in at a 9.1 centimeter metatarsal width. That toe box width comes in at 10 centimeters, which actually isn't terrible. The taper on the toe box is 30 degrees. Yes, I'm including all the tapering of the toe box as well as um, length of the toe boxes on all my reviews going forward, and it's going to be in the basketball shoe guide. The Google sheet that is available for purchase in the description below, so you can check that out. I am going back and doing all the shoes, uh, which is actually pretty interesting seeing the ones that actually have more of a taper that don't look like they do because of the window dressing on the outside of the shoe versus the ones that really do. So it has been pretty interesting. And one thing I noticed, right, is, is that when, when you're taking into account the, the shape of the toe box of a shoe and, and how much room you have, remember, you know, your your toes slant down, right, from the first to the fifth. Some of you have a long second, but eventually they start slanting down. So you can't just take a measurement across it. It has to be diagonal from your first to your fifth. So that's what I use. Um, I just take the measuring tape and I, and I go across my digital parabola and then wherever it stops on here, that's that's what I use. So I, I don't go just straight across the toe box. That's kind of arbitrary. You can just do it right up here and it would be really small versus down here would be really large. So I kind of use my foot as the guide because remember, if you're concerned about your toes uh, scrunching together, which um, I think people put a, a lot of, of emphasis on that that doesn't really need to be there. But um, if you are concerned about that, you do have to, you know, be concerned about them scrunching from the fifth up to the first, not just the first to the second, right? Because it's going to scrunch as a whole. So if you want to check that out, like I said, it's in the description below. But on these, um, th this really wasn't, it was pretty much in the middle of the pack from the shoes that I've been doing, you know, recently. One thing I noticed is, is 
at the start, I did have some cramping on the lateral side. I really think it was more just this TPU piece right here on my styloid process, right, on, on my lateral foot. So um, I'd say a narrow, medium foot, and you just go true to size on these, a 2E. You can break them in true to size. They will break in, uh, but um, if you want more comfort, I would say probably just go up one half size. They're not super long in, in the toe box, so you can go up a half size on these, and that's going to make it a little more comfortable. A 4E, I mean, I think probably one size is probably where you'd want to go, but remember, these things are tapered at 14 degrees on that inflare, so a 4E foot that's maybe more outflared, just has more bulk to it, Taylor's Bunny and things like that, it just might be a mismatch for you. Now, in terms of the snake bitten foot, somebody with heel pain, ball of foot pain, arch pain, shin splints, whatever, these things are tremendous on their own or with an orthotic. Remember, compartmentalized foams made of thermoplastics are just, like I said, they're very secure, they're very insulating. So um, with how well that shank kind of covers the arch on these things, um, the drop in them, kind of the, the slope of this shoe, I felt very, very well supported in this shoe, um, better than most in terms of the support specific category on these. Um, they will take an orthotic okay, too bulky of an orthotic though, you're gonna get heel slippage on these. Um, in terms of a really streamlined shoe for ankle sprainers, I think they're, this is one of the better ones out there. It's funny because when I first put them on, they felt a little bit, not unstable, but it just felt like I was moving a little bit. And then it's interesting because the heel slippage didn't break you know, it, it didn't get better once I broke them in, but everything else got a little bit more secure once I broke them in. So, I mean, I was running back and forth these really no problem, having no issues whatsoever. So, like I said, for a more streamlined shoe for an ankle sprainer, I think these are probably one of the better ones out there. And in terms of the good old performance, the Zap one, I mean, like I said, I, you know, kind of touched on it. These things are just incredibly quick shoes. They are very good for getting quick, quick footwork down. Um, I was using these and, and a little bit of a bulkier shoe that day, uh, the, one of the days that I was uh, play testing them indoors. And uh, you could really tell how much quicker these were than some more bulkier shoes, but they also felt as secure as those bulkier shoes. So I'd say getting a quick jumper, quick three off, or just, you know, fast footwork, right? Trying to do footwork drills I've been doing in my basketball lessons. It just felt so much easier to do it in these because they just popped off the ground so easily and getting up on the balls of your foot in these, are it's just so easy to do, right? That shank is almost holding you up there, right? It's almost like an assist, right? It's almost like a little, you have a little, little you know, like a stick behind you that's holding the shoe up. And I think that was really what I noticed was that, you know, because my coach has just been just, just screaming at me to get up on the balls of my foot and stay up on the balls of my foot and on these, so much easier and I just felt a little bit snappier in these versus uh, some others that I was using that day. So yeah, really quick shoe no matter if you are going coast to coast or if you're in a contained area just trying to get a shot off. So yeah, pleasantly surprised as, as I kept playing them when I first started in them, I thought they were just pretty okay and then once it kind of broke them in and got you know rid of the cramping and everything like that, that's really when these started to come alive for me. So I was really I was really pleased with these, how they played over the course of time. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And of course, remember Anta does have the Kai one out right now that a lot of people are just super interested in. So if you do wanna see me cut that one in half and see what's inside of those things, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you somewhere in the sneakerverse.